Don't you just love the smell of homemade bread coming right out of the oven on a cold winter's night? I'm making some today in my Dutch oven, along with some homemade pasta fajol soup today on Mimi's Sweet and Savory Life. So let's get started making the bread. We're going to need a package of active dry yeast, along with one teaspoon of sugar, and one and a fourth cups of warm water. And we want it about 100 degrees. So let's see, I think I just had it there. Get on up there. There you go, you can do it, you can do it. You can do it. 99, five, six, There's 100 degrees, point what? Five, okay, we're fine. 100 degrees. We're gonna take our stand mixer, and if you don't have a KitchenAid stand mixer or something, or whatever brand, um, just use a large bowl, And it, but it takes a lot of elbow, elbow grease. In this, you're going to put your package of active dry yeast, along with one teaspoon of sugar. Now that helps the yeast activate. So your one teaspoon of sugar and our one and a quarter cups of warm water at 100 degrees. Pour that all in together. And what I like to do is just kind of mix it up, try to get some of the yeast off the sides, as maybe you could see. Just mix it up a little bit. Get it kind of dissolved there. Stir it up. We're going to let that sit for approximately five minutes uh, in, in the bowl until it gets foamy and you'll start to see this foam on the top of it. And I'll show you in a bit when that happens. Make sure that your kitchen is warm. Um, it's cold outside here today, but I've kicked the heat up just to make sure that I have some delicious bread to share. After the yeast has risen, add in two teaspoons of salt. That helps give that flavor. Let's put it into our mixer with the dough hook on it. And that will help a lot to have that dough hook. And we're going to mix it on low. I'm going to be adding in two and a quarter cups of flour, just a little at a time, uh, until it's well incorporated. Lightly flour all sides, all sides of the dough. So I'm just gonna put some in my hands too. So we'll just sprinkle some on this side here. Since it is sticky, I'm putting it on my hands. Help me a little bit. Can you see that? Just pulling it, getting it down on the sides, trying to get it into a little type of ball not too stiff. Turn it over. Yep. It's 
reminds me of Chevy Chase in Christmas Vacation when he's got the glue on his hands and trying to <laughs> flip the pages of the magazine as he and his wife are in bed. That'll work out too well for him. <coughs> Excuse me. And then just lightly flour on this side as well. A little more on my feet. flour there. Yeah, that's that's acting better. Just needed a little more flour. Okay, let's flip that over a little into the bowl. I'll add my last bit of flour just to unsticky it a little. Now, all we do here, that's what it looks like there. You can see as it moves, it's kind of unsticking from the sides, which is perfect. That's what we want. So we're going to take a little tea towel, put it over the top of it, just let it rise for one hour, just like that, until it doubles in size. The dough has risen for one hour, and it sure looks like it's doubled in size. It has come close to that for sure. I need a little bit of water on my hands to uh, separate it maybe from the from the uh, sides. So we're going to take it. Okay. Maybe you could see it this way. I think you can. To separate it a little bit. Still a little sticky, but that's okay. Just putting it on a little bit of a floured um, here we go. On a floured board. Here we are. While your dough is doing its final rise for the last 30 minutes, take your Dutch oven with the lid. Set your um, oven at 460 degrees. So what we do is take the Dutch oven with the lid on, put it in the oven, close it up and let it go. It'll heat up and the dough will get right back into it after it's done rising. It's going to smell so good in here. While I've got the final 30 minutes of the rise on my Dutch oven bread that I'm making and the Dutch oven is in my oven heating up. I'm going to be making, to go along with that bread, my pasta fajol soup. These are the ingredients that I'm going to be using on them. But first I wanted just to tell you a quick story. You might have noticed some of the items that I had against the backdrop. This one picture here, I love. It's such a wonderful family member, a memory, if I can have a good memory, of Cannell Meadows. Um, this is in Kernville, California, where I grew up, and my dad was in the Forest Service. He's 92 now, and uh, he got permission from Santa Claus that year for Christmas to take his whole family to spend the night there. Now, just imagine with this all being, oh, sorry about the glare, snow everywhere. It, there was just, it was just covered with snow. It was so wonderful had an outhouse. I mean, we had to go to a wooden outhouse as we were there. I was young, uh, not even a teenager. It was just so much fun. We stayed there overnight in the snow. There was wire all around the windows because of bears, yes. And it was just a beautiful night. Inside the cabin there was uh, bunk beds and then a very rickety old double bed that my parents slept on that night and uh, one of my brothers and my sister and I slept in front of the fireplace on the floor. My little brother was keeping the fire going all night long so there's the chimney of that. In here we had this little stove um, that you probably have seen here and it was it was exactly like the one that I have. And that, I just love this. And you could, I could maybe make some bread in here. 
but uh, we actually had one of those in it in the pipe coming up. And that night my dad ended up telling a story of the hand. I think he made it up on the spot. I know, I know it was just bizarre and so much fun. And we would laugh and laugh and laugh of a, a 49er, a gold miner. Two of them going around. One guy falls off the cliff and he's holding on by his hands and the greedy one that's safe up top ends up, sorry kids, but he chops his hand right at the wrist. So the guy falls down and he's dead and the hand is sticking up still on the, on the rocky trail on the mountain and the good one or the bad guy, he goes and goes into town and he stole all the gold. He had the other guy's gold too. So this hand comes to life and slowly goes to try to find the guy. And you know, as he's laying in bed, when he finally finds him, oh, good night, it's time for bed. We, it was just the funniest story. We're supposed to continue the story on with our children and grandchildren. And that's like what it looked like to me. I just had to get them. Uh, my snowy cabin in the snow. So that's why I have those up there. And it's perfect. If Just imagine being there, having this nice, wonderful mm, aroma of fresh baked bread and homemade soup and surrounded by the snow and some bears and tigers and lions oh my and my mom she's 89 now too so we we really enjoy reminiscing about this story so i'm going to get started now on the pasta fajol soup these are the ingredients that we have some onion carrots celery garlic back here zucchini dried basil parsley flakes i like the diced fire roasted uh, tomatoes white beans i was going to make my own last night soak them and cook them and i just ran out of time and literally forgot and baby spinach um usually vegetable stock this time my husband says you know i'd like to have chicken broth in it so that's what we're going to do but if i had um vegetarian uh, vegans and vegetarians coming i would do it with the regular vegetable broth and salt and pepper and then you can add your pasta, a little short grain pasta. Make sure that it's a gluten free. I like Tinkiada, T-I-N-K-Y-A-D-A. -A. Tinkiada brand, to me, that's just the best for the brown rice um, pasta, short pasta. And that of course would be gluten free vegan also. I heard the buzzer. Let's get it. The Dutch oven out of the oven. It's been heating up at 460 degrees. It is super hot. Please keep your mitts on. <laughs> keep your oven loving mitts to yourself. No, actually put them on this. Lift it up. Ooh, that's heavy. Put your lid off. Close up your oven, of course. Now, what we're going to do with our dough that has risen. Oh gosh, doesn't that look nice? Can you imagine? Mm. I'm gonna turn this out onto the uh, floured, uh, what is this called? I have struggles sometimes. I told you, I have some <laughs> physical things, but I never give up and I never surrender. So here goes, language. Okay, so we're going to take the dough Put it, just tip it slightly. Get all of it out. Okay, that's that's a done deal there. You've got your little bit of flour. Now into that red hot Dutch oven. We're going to very carefully you don't want to burn your hands on the sides. So put the seam side up now. So that's what we have done. Just lay it in there very carefully. That looks good. 
put that lid on. Don't forget your mitts. Put it back in the oven. Now it's going to start to bake. Whoop. Oh, this is very heavy. Usually I get someone else to do that for me. We have that in the oven now for I think 30 minutes. Let me check. Yes. For 30 minutes with the lid on it. It's going to smell so good. We have our onion. I've cut it already kind of back to the the root there. So I'm just going to be just a rough cut to not finely dice, but just, you know, it's kind of a rustic soup, so you want to have some flavors in there. And I know I'm probably cutting this wrong, whatever, but this is the way I do it. Get rid of that. So we've got our onion. And we'll take some garlic out. And we get this. I just kind of Stick it down here and twist. Open it up a little bit. Let's see if these are good. There's one there. If you like garlic? I do too. We all do. And of course, there's lots of health benefits from it. So that's wonderful as well. I just, I don't really have a recipe recipe for this. I just put in however much I want. Well, there's a nice couple big ones. All right, so I've got my onion here. That's ready. The I usually have a little bowl here that I just stick all this kind of stuff in the unwanted. So I just take my fork, my uh, knife, kind of slant it down so I'm not going to cut myself. Smasheroo. Okay, here's some more. I hope, I guess. I shouldn't look at the camera when I'm cutting. Then I'll be like, uh, who is it, Dan Aykroyd when he was imitating <laughs> um, Julia Childs. Oh, my, my hand, I seem to come with a, with a getting an accident and bleeding a little bit, you know. And then it's, of course, gushing everywhere. So I don't think you'd appreciate seeing that for reals. So I won't look now. Okay, we got the garlic. We got the garlic, we got the onion. But I'll take the celery now. And I, you know, this is where the real good celery flavor comes from. Get your celery, a couple stalks. I, when I make soup, I like a lot of stuff. I want a bite. I want, a, I want like everything in one bite. And then just uh, line her up. <clears throat> Put them in the spoon position, right? That helps keep them together. And if you do more than one, of course, it'll go a little faster. And I just chippity chop. Go however slow or fast that you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna put in more than that. What we're gonna do with this, the celery, the carrots and the onions. Do you know what that's called together? It's a French word. Can you, do you know it? Mirquois. Mirquois. That is uh, French. It means the three in one. Like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's how they think of it. Which is great. Onions, celery, carrot. The three in one. Okay, mirquois. I'm going to saute this in a little bit of olive oil in my pan um, when this all gets done. I'm going to turn on the pan a little bit now to, to probably eight. Make sure everything's away from it. And it looks like I got 10 minutes or so until the bread is ready to be uh, taken out of the oven. Take a look at it. Yeah, I'm just going to cut them in half. I like that size. Don't you? I, I don't like it when you have a little carrot in a soup and it just turns into mush, right, in your mouth. I like, 
I like to have something and I like the sweet flavor of carrots and cooking them like this just makes them easier for me to eat personally. Um, so just with the things I've got going on. So anyway, I've got the three in one, the Mirquois, and we'll add that in with olive oil and saute those for a few minutes. My carrots, celery, and onion go into the heated up pan with the olive oil on it. There's gonna be a sizzle. Yeah, baby. Sizzle away. Good job, kids. You mirepoix. All three of you, you triplets, you. Saute these for, you know, five minutes or so. And you just stir it occasionally because it's got to get to the heat for it to cook right, right? Oh, wow. Wonderful. Let's check the bread. I've got the soup going on top. I've got the Dutch oven bread. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I really should not be barefoot. Oh, you didn't see that anyway. No, I'm not barefoot. Okay, take the lid off. Look at that. Oh, nice. Can you see that bread? It's certainly getting there. Now, we're going to just take the lid off and just have it in there for about, well, 10 to 20 minutes, but I'm going to say 10, baby. It's such a cut up. So I'm just going to kind of slice it in half, stand it on end. It curves sometimes, but it's all right. Take your zucchini, kind of line it up. I'm just not too small of pieces. out like that. That's a good size. Because this soup can actually be ready in like 30 minutes of doing it, you know? So what is that? About mm, half inch? This is going to be four zucchini here. We're going to be putting in the beans too and the fire roasted tomatoes. Oh man. And like I said, don't forget, if somebody is vegan, um, you know, don't have chicken broth for them. Do the, do the vegetarian, uh, the vegetable broth. It's still good. You just might need to put in a few more little seasonings on it, but it's good. But this time, and I like to make my husband happy, and he said, can we please just have some chicken broth this time in it instead of the vegetable broth? And I said, yes. There's our zucchini. <laughs> And we'll just put it right all in. Whoop. I like these bendy ones. Bend it like Beckham. Okay. I'm going to do a tablespoon of basil. I love the smell of it. Smell it. Whoop, where are you? Oh, it's so good. Yep, scratch and sniff right there. Okay. Remember how I told you yesterday, don't, don't sprinkle stuff in there because what if you drop it? Then you just, that would just, oh, come on. So, all right, over here. You just don't want a whole bunch of anything, any of your seasonings, basil or salt or pepper. You know, if you drop it or you get too much, you've done that before and you know it. <laughs> Diced fire roasted tomatoes. They're very good. Okay, I'm going to add in my fire roasted, diced fire roasted tomatoes. Mm. See the black on there because they were fire roasted, right? How groovy. And the juice. I make a lot because why not, you know? Some days I don't feel good. and. I just am unable to cook and walk and stand and all this kind of stuff. So I'm just, I like to make a lot. You can, you can always freeze it as well. 
turn that up a little bit. You can cook once and eat twice or thrice or frice or whatever, however you say it. White beans and their liquid. These are white beans. Um, we also have cannellini beans that could be used as well. Just any white bean. Not pintos, not black beans. Save your black beans for that spicy black hummus I made yesterday. Well, you don't know yet that I made it yesterday, but you shall see. Have that. Oh, you know what? There's some weird bean or something there. I'm taking that out. Ooh, Ugh. don't even look. Don't look. Okay. The beans, the mirepoix, the garlic, tomatoes, the fire roasted, roasted tomatoes. I did add a little bit more garlic in there, by the way. Just imagine this, all nice and warm with the bread. Oh, my lanta. Stir that in a little bit as well. See, that's going to be full of stuff, right? All the things. Don't you love all the things? We'll add in our, our broth, whatever kind you want. This time I'm doing chicken. Do the vegetable broth to make it vegetarian or vegan. The bread! The bread! Oh. You can add salt and pepper at your own tasting, whatever you think. It's just putting some in. Let's see the bread. Whoops. Bumped into something back here. Oh, look at that. That is nice. Don't forget to, you know, cover your hands. 460 degrees. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Take it out this way of your Dutch oven and uh, put it on the cooling rack for at least 20 minutes, okay? 20 minutes, cut into it. Smells very good in the house. We're gonna have it with the soup tonight. You want to come over? All right. Give me about 20 minutes. I forgot something. The baby spinach. Yeah. It just uh, needs to be in there. And I almost forgot because it was just sitting so quietly and behaving itself that I just passed them by. Okay. And you know how spinach, when you use it and you put it in water, it really shrinks up. So there's, there's one I don't want to really use. If, if it's too big for you, you can also just, you know, chop it, just a rough chop, just to make it a little bit smaller for you, if you'd like. Rip it or tear it or whatever you'd like. And you're going to put in actually more spinach than what you think, because it does um, melt in the water, you know? Okay. I just want pieces, and you don't have to tell your kids that it's spinach if they don't like it. You just say it's green goodness or something, but of course very healthy for you and your children. Besides, I know they want to be just like Popeye, and that's what I used to do with spinach when I was a kid. My mom would make cooked spinach, actually, and I ate it because I wanted to be strong like Popeye. And I'm sure I am today because of it. It is boiling. Yep, and we take the lid off. Turn it down a little bit. I have already turned it down a little bit. Let's just get it to simmer. What I find though is that when I put pasta into um, a thing like this, it gets mushy. And especially if it lasts, you know, for two, three days or something along those lines, and it just. <laughs> just kind of falls apart and it seems like it's just not as good to eat. So we have it separate and if you want to add it, you add it to your own bowl if you'd like. Dinner is ready, the soup is ready, the bread is ready, it's been sitting for 20 minutes. Let's see, nice crusty French bread. 
out of the oven. We've let it cool. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Let's do another slice. Nice and crispy. Look at that. It's still warm. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. It's, cool. it's uh, softer on that side. So I'm going to take it. I know it looks weird. But look at that. Oh my goodness. Don't you just love that? Bread slathered with butter. Oh my goodness. And it smells so good. <laughs> Honey, are you ready for dinner? Nice. Ooh, it's hot. Nice dinner on a very cold night. Thank you so much for watching my show. And we'll see you next week on Mimi's Sweet or Is It Savory Life.